Welcome to the Instinctive Influencers Podcast, a show where influence becomes one of your tools for success. Now, here are your hosts, Brian Weber and Ed Haley. Hi, I'm Brian. I am Ed. And this is the Instinctive Influencers Podcast. Ed, we are back and we are going to talk about a topic today that is, I think, quite possibly your favorite. Well, I don't have to try to sneak it into the show uh, today. No. Because it's going to come up a number of times, I'm sure. So at least I don't have to be like, oh, man, it's the last five minutes of the show and I haven't got this in yet. I got to figure a way to work this into the show. So, yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> the entire show is about lifelong learning. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember kind of the the peaking our interest in lifelong learning where it starts? Um, so let's just say I'm somebody who didn't remember or didn't know. How about you inform them? Uh, it was the how more. <laughs> yeah, Brian, when we were doing the how more research, he had a quote about lifelong learning that we read on that show. And for our listeners, if you want to know the quote, you'll have to go listen to the how more on leadership episode way back in the day at number 51 and 50 episode 51 and 52. Um, yeah, but that kind of peaked some. Now we were doing it before then, but it, for me, oh, yeah. because I'm I'm a first cavalry, you know, veteran, I've always studied how more for years and and watched the movie, read the book, watched the movie again to see how it went with the book. I have his biography by Mike Guarda. I have the how more on leadership, and and so because I knew this quote already, and I kind of knew the lifelong learning thing, we've used it on the show before episode 51, but oh yeah, after that, you know, it was like, we really need to do something with lifelong learning. And uh, that's kind of what brings us here today, Brian. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to really get into this because it was funny when I started doing some of the research on it, I was like, oh man, this really helps out because not only do we discuss couple different areas of lifelong learning but also the uh this particular article that i found uh there's an actual acronym and it kind of helps with that whole lifelong learning mentality which it, and it's kind of nice you know because sometimes you know having something to reflect back upon which reflect is one of them um <laughs> helps you uh with the process if that makes sense so yeah i'm I'm, a, I'm pretty stoked about this man uh this has been one of the topics that has been on my mind for a while to get you know just to get out there and uh hey i think we need to get after it and get it done uh i would agree with you brian as always <laughs> yeah hey you know and the thing is ed sometimes i i feel like sometimes we get things confused too much not uh, like not particularly just you and i i'm talking about just in general people we get things confused and we constantly want to associate the lifelong learning idea or just in general learning associated only to going to school and i think that's you know that's a bit of a fallacy i don't think that that's exactly what it i really i personally know that you lifelong learning comes from all types of things. It's experiences, you know, it's a daily work, learning new things at work, all these, there's so much to go about it in the personal life versus the professional life, which we're going to mm -hmm. talk about both. I mean, there's so much within that realm that lifelong learning is just that it's just day to day learning something new and it may affect this side of life or that side of life, but it's constantly evolving. Yeah. And it's the, the, the ability to be adaptable and change, and learn new things, you know, that flexibility that you want to have. Um, you know, I can tell you that uh, my wife works in, in the military hospital here, but there are a lot of Germans, uh, locals that work there as well. Mm -hmm. And she has picked up a bit of German from, you know, working there. I mean, and, you know, she's the same age as me. And here she is learning, a, not just learning something, but she's learning a language or, you know, in our when we get a new job, right? You're learning to do something new. That's still lifelong learning. We don't think of it like that because like you said, we want to associate with schools and books and brick and mortar. But yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, so you're getting ready to go take over as a, as a, as a first sergeant at a new unit, right? That does things differently. So there's, there's a learning curve there. You're going to have to learn the battle flow of that unit. You're going to have to learn kind of their mission set their you know, uh, mission essential tasking list, those type of things. Uh, yep. 
So there you go, Brian. There you are at 22 years in the military and learning something about a military organization again. Plus, you have to learn their history. Yeah. I, and you know, I thought I enjoy it every time, man. It's amazing. And But really, when you think about this lifelong learning thing, right, Ed, uh, it's knowledge. It's gaining knowledge. And basically, you know, you can acquire that knowledge in multiple different types of areas, you know, skill sets, whatever it is. But the idea of learning in itself, well, that right there to me, it, it's unavoidable and, it, and it's going to happen no matter what. It just takes time sometimes. You know, uh, something else that I, I kind of read here talks about lifelong learning. Uh, it's about really creating and maintaining a positive attitude, which that's something you and I have constantly reflect upon, right? You know, learning both for, you know, for our personal lives and our professional lives and the development of that. If, if you constantly want to gain from it, I think you, you pull from the positive side of things. I mean, you can learn from the negative side. I got Mm -hmm. that. But if you're more positive towards the learning, it allows you to receive it better, right? Um, we, We tend to, we we may gravitate towards the negative things sometimes, but we want to remember the positive side of things, and that's why it's best to kind of you know kind of gain that new that new knowledge in a in a positive uh, atmosphere. Yeah, and it's good to be positive about what you're learning. So if your company, you know, your company or organization uh, gets a new software, all right, a lot of people are going to be kind of really like, oh no, this isn't going to be as good as what we're using currently. That is not, you know, that is not helping out with the lifelong process of, of learning. But if you embrace it yep. and use the software and learn to use it and master it, and then provide feedback that, hey, these are the issues I see with this software compared to the old one. Maybe they can get that fixed. But, you know, we went through it when we first changed the, the physical training program. Right. We talked about many times on the show, we went through this where people are like, nope, the old way is better. The old way is better. Didn't want to learn a new way. And then when they found out, oh, well, I'm going to be evaluated at school on the new way, I should probably learn it. And even then, you still see yeah. guys come to school, guys and gals come to school that don't know it because they were so against learning the new thing. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, that's the negative that you're talking about. But just if you embrace new things, and give it its, you know, its, its uh, the your best effort, and then try to improve it. You know, I, I like that you brought up there about uh, about the lifelong learning and it, and it being change. Uh, and and to me, something that I've learned over the past few years really is there's a a key term that people can look up called being an agent of change. And that's kind of like you're like the facilitator of that change, and it's not forcing or cramming a change. Uh, down somebody's throat through whatever process you decide, but instead it's, you know, figuring out how to, uh, I don't want to say manipulate, but kind of alter the situation for different types of people so that they can accept that change. And to me, that in itself is a form of lifelong learning, right? Because I'm doing my part. I'm not just learning about whatever the change is. I'm also learning about the people within my organization or my family or whatever it is that we're, so I, it's like you're bulking up on all this different stuff that you're you're gaining new knowledge on, you know. And, and that's one of the key things here, Ed, is you know, lifelong learners, they're motivated. They're motivated to learn. Oh, they're yeah. motivated to develop because they want to. And it is normally when somebody's seeking this out, right? It is deliberate, and it's a voluntary act. And to me, when you have somebody that's trying to do this, that they, you know, they're deliberately trying to act upon new knowledge, I think you have an investment. You know, I, I've said it before, talking about the, you know, comparing an investment in, within people, much like the stock market. Uh, if, I com- if I invest in this person, I'm not going to uh, withdraw all my investment when something bad happens. You know, they're learning along that line. They're, they're learning how to handle situations. Instead, what I do is I embrace that and help them along to continue that growth so the return on my investment is greater than when I originally invested. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the investment, you know, in the end, the, the payoff is your own personal and professional development and, and improvement in the way you see things and understand the world around you. Yes. You know, both of us, both of us had to learn a new culture. We, we both went, you know, to Europe and, and to Korea. 
And, you know, that's still learning. We had to learn how things work or we would have to be confined to the, to the military base. Well, that's no fun. So yeah, when you go off, you have to learn what are the customs, you know, here, one of the big ones that we had to learn is you don't tip at the restaurants. It's yeah. already built into yeah. the pricing. Or, yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, we come over here and meanwhile, it's insulting uh, to, to drop tips. So that's something we had to learn about the culture. And, and what it does is it makes it better. It makes them more open to you being there. Right. And improves your, your experience overall. So, um, and that's one of the great things about the military is we get to experience various cultures and we're always learning about these different cultures. Cause yeah, you know, if I never came in the military, would I know anything about European culture? Probably not. Would mm-hmm. you know anything as a guy working, you know, nine to five in Maine, would you really understand the Korean culture? Probably no. not. No. So that's some of the advantages and the payoffs from our investment in lifelong learning. Yeah, and, and I like what you brought up there because now I want a question for you. So you said you all don't do tips either. We don't do it here either, right? Um, that's off post. But now on post, do you, like for instance, I go to get my hair cut, and I I give the the uh, the gentleman a tip. I always do, and I think it's just that's my habit. And I they don't. I've asked uh, some of the Korean soldiers here if that's deemed as. Uh, you know, disrespectful. And they said, no, because they're, you know, when they're on posts like that, they accept that that's the culture we are in. And that's within, this is our community, you know what I mean? Away from our bigger community type thing. Now, do you do that at all? Uh, I want to say, I know I tip the, the person that cuts my hair um, Mm -hmm. on post. Uh, I believe my wife also tips uh, the people, the girl that does her hair on post as well. We don't really eat at the restaurants where you would tip on post. Traditionally, if we eat on post, it's usually something more fast food than yeah. sit down. Like there is a, you know, there's a couple of, there's a PF Chang's and stuff on post, but we really don't eat there very often. So I am but jealous. We do definitely tip. <laughs> we do definitely tip like for hair and stuff like that. And then um, also as we travel, because there are some other countries where it's like, it's acceptable, but not necessary. So we'll usually give it a Google, like, you know, tipping etiquette and Rome, and then we'll see what it says. And that's how we'll base everything off of usually. Mm, got you. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, that's, that's just another thing to learn, you know, for us to learn about, you know, from each other, you know, the, the idea of how, you know, just how you interact within those communities outside of the U S I, I can definitely say that it's, it's enlightening to learn about the customs, traditions and things like that. And, and to, and too often, you know, sometimes we want to uh, force our our customs and courtesies on others, but sometimes we don't, and we don't look at that. So that's just another form of lifelong learning that we have to get involved in. Um, but what we're really going to get dig into here, Ed, uh, obviously you and I, we're going to go back and forth with some of this stuff, but we're actually going to get into basically there's two different types uh, of lifelong learning, uh, basically development, uh, you know, with lifelong learning uh, is you have the personal development and then you have the professional side of development. And we're going to kind of, we're going to kind of talk about them. But to me, Ed, I really feel like not only can they be separate, but they can also can be combined and joined because oh, yeah. they can yeah. complement one another. So I don't, I don't want to think anybody think, Oh, well, there's two separate things. No, it's not, you know? So, um, so this author that I looked up right here, it talks about, uh, learning, for its own sake brings on its own advantages and then some of the examples of uh, learning and what those advantages are uh, one is boost our confidence and self-esteem which i can tell i can tell you right now learning new stuff definitely helps boost that confidence and self-esteem it makes us less risk adverse and more adaptable to change when it happens that that to me because now you can actually when when we look at it that way we can actually take and look at it different angles. So that way we're trying to, we're really hitting on the mark of the, the different areas that we need to. Uh, it helps us also to achieve a more uh, satisfying personal life, even when we're doing this development in our professional life. Uh, then yeah. it also challenges our ideas and beliefs because what if we're stuck in, I like to call it stuck on stupid <laughs> and we're not accepting this new knowledge, right? And then I thought, like, oh man, this new information completely changes my 
my outlook on this and how I've been doing this X, Y, and Z. I mean, Ed, I tell you right now, and I'm going to say the last one really is it says it can be fun, but I'll tell you right now with a new look on ideas and beliefs, I, personal life, how I raise my children, you know, learning new things and new techniques of, uh, and, and I will definitely say that, you know, uh, all the different things that Ethan's gone through has helped me learn how to be a better parent, like how to communicate, how to, you know, how to, uh, uh, if he does something wrong, well, what do we do discipline wise? You know, like I don't, I don't spank my kids, but Ethan can do a lot of burpees. I can tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like my way of going about it. I'm making a strong little little person. Uh, Eva, she, I don't know about her though. She, I don't know. she she's definitely uh, she's like a small flower. So, well, I think uh, I think when you talk about the, these last few things you just mentioned here, Brian, I think when you look at we just talked about the cultural uh, differences and learning those cultural differences, and that helps us achieve a more satisfying personal life because it enhances your your. Um, it enhances your experience when you go to these places, right? Uh, yeah. To have a better understanding of the tipping. And I mean, I don't want to insult somebody. I mean, I, obviously, if they deserve the tip, they do. But I don't want to insult them by giving it to them. But it helps you understand things and, and have a better appreciation. Like, you know, we went, uh, we just went out to a place here, a Vietnamese restaurant. And it's like back in the in the alleyway. Like, it was like, okay, but so I, good reviews somebody told me it was really good and like you know they they do some things that i'm not used to anyway they bring you plum wine afterwards like a shot of plum wine after your food um they bring you a hot towel you know like you get on the plane they bring you yeah, a hot yeah. towel to wash your face and hands off after you're done eating and but you know it, it, it's easy for me to make a face or nonverbal communication like what is this this is so strange but instead, you just you learn. Oh, this must be part of their culture, and you embrace it, and then it makes your yeah. experience. As a matter of fact, the lady that brought it to us, she sat there and just she spoke English, so she sat there and chatted with us for a little while, like laughing, and you know, um, and then that's where the one you kind of hit last briefly that can be fun because you learn those things and you have those experiences, and it can it can be it can be interesting, it can be fun, um, you know. And there's nothing wrong with having a little fun while you learn. I don't think so. I mean, I wish oh, I would yeah. have had more fun in school when I learned. But, um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Eh, you know, it, but then again, you think about it. Now that we're older, much wiser. You much wiser than me because you're much older than me. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> no, I mean, you think about it. When we were younger, mine's got, you know, on one track. We want to do this and only this. And now as we get older, we're like, oh, diversify, diversify. You know, it's like... You, it's almost like we, and I, I speak for myself and I'm hoping I speak for you the same way is it's like, I have this, uh, undying hunger for new knowledge. I, I mean, I just love soaking up information and learning. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I totally well, understand that, man. And I find it to be fun. That's why I do this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think about it. We're on episode 65. We've got 65 episodes of content. Every one of them's at least an hour. Some of them are two hours. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the research and all the stuff we've got. I mean, you can't, you couldn't tell me there wasn't any lifelong learning in that bit. Oh yeah, for personal Plenty. and for professional. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, because I mean, yeah, we do this. You and I do this, and it's kind of a um, a hobbyish thing, and we have a vision, but it's still for us professional, and then we do it. You know, I personally enjoy doing the podcast, so yeah, we're learning. And that's one of the things you talked about, how they can be, you know, both together and work together. And that's one of the great examples of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to get into, audience, uh, we're actually going to talk about the two sectors we're talking about in this lifelong learning. And those two sectors, once again, is the personal development and then the professional development. And then we're going to get into this little acronym. It's called MASTER. And we'll go through the different elements of the M-A-S-T-E-R uh, for it, but hey, Ed, once you once you start us off with this personal development and, and learning for it. All right, so with personal development, right? First of all, it's important to remember that uh, you know you don't have to have a specific reason for learning because we, like we've been talking about you know for the first twenty minutes of the show is learning for the sake of learning can in itself be a rewarding experience 
You know, yeah. you read something. I, as a matter of fact, I'm currently reading Warfare in the Medieval World by an author named Brian Todd Carey. And I'm just reading for the sake of reading, but I'm still learning something and, and it's rewarding. Now, yeah, it doesn't go with my degree, you know, in military history. Well, absolutely. I've already done the class that used that book, but still did it. And then, you know, one thing that the author of the article has in here, first of all, there's no, you know, um, there's very little science for this, but it says there's a common view that continuous learning and having an active mind throughout life may delay or halt the progress of some forms of dementia. So there's a, there's a payoff right there for learning. If that in fact is proven to be true as more science is developed for it. I mean, I I don't know if you've ever experienced somebody with dementia, Brian, but I I have, and it is scary. Oh yeah. Um, So if I can delay or halt it by learning, like, huh, that's that's the reward by itself. Just if we just stop right there, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And and then yeah, you're just be- personal development. You're bettering yourself uh, through you know having an open mind and embracing the fact that you don't know it all. Yeah. And that you you need to continue to learn and grow. Um, so well, that's uh, yeah, I let mean. Me, let me stop it right there, Ed, because yeah, it kind of makes me think about something, and I guess. This really fits along this lines of that personal development. For instance, have you ever found yourself sitting there watching one of these National Geographic shows about, like, say, lions or tigers or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And there's no, like, there's, it's not like you're going to go out and be a, a, a zoologist or you're going to go out and be, a, like, a safari expert, but you're totally, in you know, engaged with whatever it is, and you find it to be rewarding because, or... I say you, you find it to be rewarding because you wouldn't normally just be sitting there, you know, watching something like that. I mean, it's something like that you've engaged into and you, and you, and you enjoy it. So that to me, that's a rewarding experience and you, you gain some new knowledge about something. So I, and, and it can, and it doesn't even have to be like that. It, you know, it could be a YouTube video, right. About how to power lift proper in the deadlift, you know, and looking at the techniques, you know, those, I mean, to me, that's another one, or it could be something on how to build this cool little gadget out of, you know, pieces and parts that you find at the lows and to make life better in X, Y, and Z. So, I mean, it is funny how we don't even realize the personal development we're trying to gain, even while we're doing it. Yeah, and you said YouTube, and YouTube is one of the great things that we have available to us now for that type of stuff because I can literally go into YouTube and say video on how to get rid of fungus on plants or something, and it will come up and tell you, hey, here's some things and some do-it-yourselves. And as a matter of fact, funny enough, Brian, I bought some uh, white Converse All-Stars at the outlet. Yeah. And I was like, huh, I, you know, I think I want to take some paint or something and like try to be creative and, 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 you know, make them my own went on the old YouTube and there are so many videos on customizing your shoes, how to do it. Well, guess what? If I use that, I'm learning a new skill on how to do something uh, through YouTube. So yeah. there you go. I've learned something random new whether it be something working on your car like i know guys who work on their car based off of youtube i changed a radiator with a friend of mine and when we got stuck went to the youtube uh uh and found out oh that's what we missed let's go do that you know so those are just good opportunities for some kind of personal um you know development through lifelong learning that i think are amazing opportunities you had something to add brian yeah, yeah. So one of the it's funny that you brought that up about the shoes and stuff. One of the things we may talk about here is about hobbies and stuff. But for instance, YouTube, I love using it for learning how to paint different types of scenes, or you know, because I enjoy painting. Uh, I've, mm-hmm. I've got a few. I'm a big Bob Ross fan. I like I, I like <laughs> using oil paints. I like because it's easier to spread, and I think it's it's kind of a real cool to use. Um, but one of the things like. I'd never seen Bob Ross do a cityscape, right? Uh, painting a cityscape. His is normally like mountains, trees, creeks, rivers, uh, ocean, stuff like that, but never like a city. Well, I found this kid who I'm telling you, he's like the young version of Bob Ross, uh, but he, his video is on how to like do a cityscape, right? And using this this same technique that Bob Ross used. 
And I sat there and I watched it and I watched it again. And on the third time is when I pulled out the paints and I got everything set up and I, I would watch a little bit, hit pause and I do that. And then I watch a little bit more, hit pause and I do that. And to me, it was so rewarding and fulfilling at the end to see this, this, I wouldn't call it a masterpiece because me, I was doing it, but just <laughs> this part of work, uh, just loving it. So, uh, yeah, I just, it is, it is something else, man. Yeah. And so it, in the article with the uh, author talks about is many reasons why people learn for per, per, per personal development. And we've hit on the first two. We're talking about um, increase your knowledge or skills around a particular hobby or pastime that you enjoy. Yep. Right. We talked about that. Um, and, and that's a good, I mean, I know I've used it, man, there's so much you can learn, especially like I said, with the, with the old YouTuber, there's so many different things you can learn. You can be like, you know, I want to try to learn to do this and bam. Um, perhaps you want to develop some entirely new skill. Here we go. That will in some way enhance your life. Take a, po a pottery or car mechanic course, for example, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, here they offer, and I'm sure they do there. They offer the language immersion courses. Yep. Where they'll help you like ACS. You can go learn German. Um, that's that excellent personal uh development and then now this one here i'm a little iffy about Re perhaps you want to research a medical condition or your ancestry so the medical condition i would i would caution because you're not a doctor <laughs> and i've seen people i've seen people go do these research and they're like well yep i've got you know i've got hiv and it's like uh, you, you haven't even taken a blood test like Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's slow your roll <laughs> yeah. but it is good to get you in some kind of ballpark and you could it could say you know maybe it does tell you oh you have a sinus infection and you're like oh and then you get the little kettle pot or whatever um yeah. the ancestry very interesting and not easy by the way no not uh, at all I, I tried to do some of this a lot of the sites of course if you're going to use the internet they're going to try to charge you and stuff but that's another excellent because it's it's interesting to see you know your ancestry and your line. Um, I've been trying to convince my siblings to do the like the DNA ancestry stuff, but nobody in my family wants to supply DNA to anybody. So so <laughs> far so good. I mean, so far I've I've failed in this. I even tried the. You guys are younger. You got extra. Give it up. And <laughs> um, but yeah. So those are some things. Now, this is one that Tammy and I are doing right now because she just came, got my phone, and booked me my flight, uh, planning a trip. And you want to learn more about the history and culture of your destination. Yeah. So what I do is – now, and, and some people find other ways. It's just easier for me. They have these little, uh, like, different cities. I'll have these little top ten guides, and it'll be, like, top ten in whatever the city, and it's, it's by uh, Eyewitness Travel. And I like them because they come with maps and they're very small and easy, but then you can read and it gives you like top 10 moments in history, top 10 museums. Oh, museums. We still go to museums in our adulthood. Guess what? We're learning when we go to those museums and we stop and we read those things. So, but yeah, when we're traveling, I love these little top 10 guys. Um, I do not get paid. We do not get any kind of kickback from them. They're just convenient. Some people use internet, but when I'm walking down the street, I don't like to pull my phone out, you know, or maybe you don't have a signal and I still have this top 10 guy. So that's another thing. Traveling. Um, I usually look up the history of where we're going so that when we're there, I can kind of provide some background to my wife, especially the military history sites. Uh, I don't want to tell her anything bogus. So I want to make sure I got my facts straight. And I'm like, oh, so if you look at this, this is the cliff, you know, this is La Hava, where the Marines came up and da, da, da. And then you and I both do this. Take a degree course later in life. I'm I'm way later in life, still doing a degree course. But because you enjoy your chosen subject and the challenges of academic study. So I was doing a degree in intelligent studies. And I don't know if you had a similar experience, but it was boring. I was really doing it because I was thinking about the money I could make doing that after the military. And it was so boring. And yeah. then that's when I switched to military history and I really enjoyed it. And I learned so much. I learned so much more doing a military history degree than I had ever learned on an intelligence studies degree. So these are just a few of the reasons people learn for personal development, Brian, uh, did any of them really stand out for you? And you're like, man, that's my, one of my faves. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think definitely the hobby one, 
you know, and you know, that learning, uh, and, and trying to increase in the hobby, because I feel like, th- and this is just me, Ed, we need a, that pull away from like work life, you know, that, that, that idea of work, uh, family work life balance type thing. Um, I, I think engaging in a good hobby and learning more about it can help almost relieve that anxiety, that stress or anything that's going on. That's kind of driving you in the wrong direction, possibly, you know, um, sometimes having a good hobby such as painting or, or even going to the gym. You know, some people don't consider going to the gym a hobby, but I kind of do, uh, because oh, it's, it's you know, <laughs> yeah, cause you're just, you know, it's, it's a, you're learning new things all the time and you're, you're understanding, but to me, it, it helps pull away, pull away from those things that you got to kind of ease your mind on. I mean, and a good, a good example to me, uh, is the way that I, if I can get involved in a hobby and pull away, it allows me to reset my brain and maybe even look at a problem or, or, or anything, or even uh, possible courses of action from a different angle, because now I've cleared my mind of that. And then I'm going back to it. Right. So that's, to me, that's a good thing. So that's why I kind of like, I like the idea of, you know, new hobbies. Plus I was talking about painting and I'm going to keep bringing it up. Yeah. Um, what I have enjoyed with at home painting, if I get my stuff out, my daughter, Eva, she wants to paint with me. And that's kind of cool too, because now it's a shared experience. And I enjoy that because she's also, you know, she's a young little girl who's learning something new. And she's very artistic in, in a sense. Uh, it's always funny though, because it may, her pictures may start off with all kinds of different colors on it, but towards the end, it's all mixed it by the end. So, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's still, it's her vision, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, maybe you, you decided to take a degree course you talked about, or, you, you know, you're doing something towards a, a degree. Uh, I kind of did the same thing as you did, Ed. You mentioned that you started in one degree plan, and then you shifted after that. Yeah, uh, I did the same thing. I started in a general studies then and it was supposed to be a general studies with a concentration in criminal justice. And as I was going through the basic courses, I kept thinking to myself, like, why am I doing this? Like, what is the, what is the goal? What's the end state? What do I want from this, you know, personally and professionally? So right there, I was mixing the two and I couldn't answer that question. So I had to re engage that. I had to draw back and I had to kind of look at the bigger picture and say, okay, what is it that I really want? And that made me change degree plans, right? And I actually, I changed schools because the school that I was going to didn't offer what I actually wanted to, you know, get involved in. And it's leadership, development of leaders, all that different stuff, team building, that type of ideas. Um, and so that's what I did. And once I got into that particular field of study, I loved it. I enjoyed it. Now, it did feel like it drug itself out because, uh, a bachelor's degree just seems like it takes forever versus a master's degree. It doesn't seem like it takes, you can do a master's degree in like it, less than a year if you work hard. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed that. And then because I, you know, that was, it was a bachelor's of science in applied management. And because I liked that so much, I went for a master's degree in executive leadership, which is more philosoph- philosophy and whatnot. And I enjoyed that even more, you know? So, and then I branched off on something else, you know, for another one. But yeah, I think, uh, I really do believe that, that, that whole, you know, looking to gain a degree f- on the personal side, I, th- what I got from it was I'm gaining knowledge for professional growth, but also on the personal side, I'm gaining some type of, um, awareness of what I really like and I enjoy it. And that was the key part of enjoying it. Yeah. Cause when you enjoy it, it's just, you're, you're passionate about it. You put more effort into it. You know, we still talk about, uh, I'm still going to procrastinate. That's just me. Um, I've worked on, but yeah, we're going to, it's just going to be more um, of a focus for us. We're going to have that focus that we need um, when we enjoy something. And when you're taking a class, I mean, obviously some people, you have to take it for whatever reason. If I'm taking a class and it's boring, I just, the effort's not going to be the same. And, yeah. and I don't retain it as well. Yeah. Oh, and, and I'm not saying, and you know, I'm not saying that every single class that I took um, for any of my degree plans that I totally like, oh, I love this. No, there were a couple that I was just like, oh, I just want to get this done. Yeah. I'm so tired of this, you know. So 
and did I learn things? Yeah, I learned things, but you know, it was part of the give and take, so to speak, is if I'm going to take something, I had to at least give a little bit of effort towards something else. So, uh, but yeah. So now that we, you know, we kind of, we hammered on this um, personal growth, Brian, but there's another aspect of lifelong learning that we were going to talk about and you're going to lead it, uh, lead us in a discussion on, but, and, and we're going to see how they, I think we're going to see how they kind of easily, very easily intertwine, Brian. So what's the other, uh, the other one we want to talk about? That would be professional development, Ed. Uh, and we use that term a lot in, in the military. You know, we have NCOPD or non-commissioned officer professional development, uh, officer, OPD, officer professional development. So we use all these different terms much like that. But it's the idea, the idea of this professional development, Ed, really, it's the capacity uh, to be able to basically earn directly, which is directly related to the willingness to learn, right? So the more I want to learn, it's supposed to, in theory, translate to earning more. Now, that does not mean that if I get a bunch of degrees, that's going to make me a mm-hmm. bunch more money. That's no, 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 no. It's the idea that if I learn more, I will be able to earn more. Um, and learning more doesn't mean just schooling wise. You know, it, it could be it could be uh, skills, right? Uh, I think trade skills. That's a that that's been a dying thing in the United States. Plumbing, carpentry, masonry. Uh, all those different areas, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like those those skills that are they've kind of faded away because people want to they want to diver, you know diversify in the technology area. Well, you still got to have people who build homes. You still have to have people that build the building that you do all your work in. If you decide to, you still have to have the people that that run that plumbing. And it's funny how those individuals earn those skills they make more than many of the people who are trying to do the technology route. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, some things, yeah. So if you look, you know, you look at your doctors, your lawyers and stuff, obviously they have a lot of schooling, which then equates to, you know, their, their uh, status as far as pay and stuff. But, you know, if, uh, beyond some of those certain jobs, I mean, you could have, I mean, I've met people that have, Oh, I have three masters or two masters it's in the military. And it's like, but what are you doing with those masters? Like, where's the payoff? Because I think that's where, yeah, you put all that hard work. And I think the reward is on when you use it. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, that's the payoff. Yeah. Does it directly correlate to where you're going within your career? To me, that's another key thing, right? I might, do I yeah. love what I, not only do I love what I'm doing with it, but also is it going to help me enhance what I do within my career? And I, that's, that's definitely why I I went the direction I went with mine, um, and I and I, that's the other thing I noticed about yours because of how much you love history and understand history that correlates so much because we learn so much from history, you know the mistakes that were made, the wins, mm-hmm. the gains, all those different things. So that's why I'm I think your decision to do your degree plan is just as beneficial and 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 uh, important as mine, even though they're two different ones. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's correct. Like, you know, a lot of people, at least in my job, they do logistics degrees, and that's fine, and it does feed into what we do in the military currently. But on the backside, like for me, I'm I don't plan on doing logistics post military career. Right. So I would rather do something that one gets me promoted because that's what we we need college to get promoted. And then the experience and the, the knowledge that I have, I can help because we do staff rides. Um, you know, we do these other events. And then, of course, we've just talked about actually yesterday's show, the value of lessons learned uh, from the past and and not, you know, touching the stove after I watched somebody else touch the stove that's hot. So those are the things I kind of looked at with a military history degree is it, it, it will work for me professionally. And then as I separate from the military, it'll help me professionally post military. So right. that was kind of my considerations, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, if you think about this, right? So we're talking about this professional development and, and how it works out. So we say professional development, it may help you with your qualifications to maybe get your foot in the door with an interview, but really that's just the start of it. 
Okay. Uh, you, once you get, it, let's say you get this new job because of this, all this information you're, you know, you gain and whatnot. You get this new job. You, you're probably gonna have to learn a whole other realm of things to be able to excel in that job. So it's good to it's good to try to gain knowledge before you're trying to you know apply for a new job. But also at the same time, it's not like okay, well I've learned everything. I'm gonna stop. No, you got to keep going, right? You have to keep adding to mm-hmm. that information, man. Um, you know, in some employers, right? They they may look at you, you know, look at well balanced people with these uh, transferable type skills uh, and and say, okay, that's what I want. So let's say you, you find yourself unemployed. Maybe you want to do some lifelong learning in hair, right? You have to do some professional development. Oh, yeah. uh, if you're unemployed, yeah. I mean, it's better to take on new skills so you can become employed again. But what about while you're employed? I mean, you. to me, it's the time of, you know, we talk about this, Ed, with the idea of training, the idea of coaching, mentoring, you know, taking on those new opportunities, uh, whether, you know, it be filling a new position, maybe it taking on a new responsibility. I mean, there's different things. Those are what allow us to keep that development going uh, in the professional area that can correlate to our personal life. So I remember uh, I just I just um, immigrated to Canada. Like I moved to Canada post-military the first time. And, you know, this is really the Internet boom hadn't happened yet. So I spent a lot of time in the library reading, trying to figure out what could I try to learn. Uh, You know, I so it's kind of funny when I read this in the article, I was like, oh, it's kind of now I was very young. And what I decided to learn was I decided to try to up my basketball game because I already played basketball. So I would like get books that were like basketball basics with drills and stuff. And then I would go to the local Y and spend hours drilling on basketball. But I mean, so um, wasn't going to help me with a job necessarily. Also, this is when I first started lifting weights, really, because I would get books from the library and learn how to lift weights properly. But at the same time, you know, it would have been better if it was something that was going to help me professionally. So I focused more on some personal learning at that point. Um, this knowledge would have been great to have, you know, it would have been great to think, oh, wow, I could really self-study these things and try to help me down the road. You know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely would have been nice to have had back in 1990. Something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and let's think about it this way, too, Ed. I know in our in, – well – no, I can't compare it to ours. In our particular career field, um, much like, say, a civilian career field, the more you try to learn and develop professionally can actually equate, equate in some shape or form to higher salaries or higher uh, pay. Because the more I try to learn, the more I'm trying to push towards promotion uh, and to earn more by taking on more responsibilities, more tasks, more missions, whatever it is. Just like in the civilian sector, if I'm trying to gain new knowledge, what I'm doing is I'm showing that I'm an asset to this organization and they may want to invest in me by paying me more. You know, I mean, to me, that makes sense, wouldn't you? Well, that definitely makes sense to try to. And so this is something my uh, my sister's very good at, where she's currently at. She is, as a matter of fact, she just told me the other day. Yeah, so I added another uh, certification to my portfolio um, because that's what it takes to to move up, get promoted, right? Yeah. So she just actually told me that uh, for her current job. So if you can do the same thing, you know, for me, like I was talking about when I separated from the military, like that would have been so awesome to be able to add stuff to my portfolio that when I do go to work, uh, you know, I could have presented. But a lot of these bigger companies, I feel, you know, the more stuff you have in your portfolio, the more certifications you have. And obviously that you can't have some certification in underwater basket weaving and you're working at this fortune 500 company, <laughs> you have to have a legit certification. that's going to benefit the company. But at the same time, that learning also has benefited you. Um, and, and I think, so that's one of those great things where the personal, um, you know, personal and professional, again, I feel like all yours are kind of cr- where I could see that crossover. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, if you think about it, someone who can uh, basically offer more expertise, you know, they'll be of more value 
not just to the employers, but also to the customers of whatever it is. Like for instance, let's say, well, when we were, you know, we always bring this up about working at the academy. And when we were at there, mm-hmm. our idea, our understanding of and, and gain of new knowledge through our lifelong learning also benefited our students because we were able to share that who, you know, technically would be considered our customers, right? So to me, it's a win-win situation, new knowledge, and then spread that new knowledge. Now, sometimes you do have those individuals who uh, they feel like they've gained solid new knowledge, but it's really just hearsay and all this. So it's kind of one of those things where you have, you know, you have to be careful about where the information is coming from or, you know, what the source is and whatnot too, though. Um, but one of the, uh, here's one of the things that this author of this article has to say, uh, to people who's trying to, you know, basically gain professional development, uh, of lifelong learning with that is if you're frustrated with your job, continuing to hone your skills will make it easier to find new ways out of a potentially stressful work situation. I agree with that. Uh, keeping an open mind to learning and giving yourself room for flexibility is key to job satisfaction. Furthermore, potentially staying ahead of competitors for jobs by being more experienced or knowledgeable can give you an edge. I completely agree with all of that. To me, uh, honing those skills or or understanding and learning more and, and trying to gain more in whatever particular area, it really does help with stress or, uh, you know, just situation analysis like that's one of the to me there's so much benefit to that ed uh within the professional realm of good situational analysis so you can look at all possible courses of action or all possible outcomes after the courses of actions are put in place things like that to me it allows you to kind of go beyond uh i think one of the things you and i a uh, big, big thing that you and I have talked about, we actually got from the Bearded Ninja. That's Bearded Ninja Beer Bomb made with real pomade and snake venom. For the guy who has a beard that is just killer, use Bearded Ninja Beard Balm. And what he taught us was red teaming, Ed. Red teaming. We went through that whole idea behind it. You got the book. I got the book. Plus, I also have the audio book. But to me, that's like another way of lifelong learning is like doing good red teaming. And we're going to actually do an episode down the road about red teaming because it's such a fascinating topic uh, and understanding of things that uh, I find it to be I find it to be useful at least weekly, uh, sometimes daily. So... Uh, your thoughts on all this, man? Yeah, I can definitely see the value of red teaming. So, you know, when you said red teaming, and I was like, yeah, you do you do a lot of learning, prefers, uh, professional learning from red teaming. You Also, you know, we've done a, a whole episode on after action reviews, and it's lately been the one I like to bring up in each episode. But those after action reviews, another opportunity to do some professional learning that is going to then uh, enhance your organization because you're going to use those, you know, those uh, improved statements and sustainments through that after action review to to move forward in the company and say, okay, that's something that didn't work. Let's how do we fix it? Let's develop courses of actions to fix it. And so, yeah, when you said red teaming, I immediately thought about the after action review episode. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, hey, Ed, it's time for us to move on a little bit. We're we're getting close to the time of wrapping this up, but before we do that, we're actually going to cover this uh, this acronym. Uh, it was actually in a book by Colin Rose, and the acronym is it's Master. Um, and I like to think of like mastering my uh, whatever it is, my learning, my development, whatever it is. Uh, but Master is used to describe the six stages that Colin Rose actually believes are key to becoming an effective learner, which I like. I like the idea on this. Uh, these stages can actually be applied to any type of learning, either formal or informal. <laughs> I do too, Brian. I'm excited about these and they're very easy too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I'm going to run down through them real quick. Master stands for motivation, acquire, search, trigger, examine, and reflect. Uh, Ed, start us off with that motivation, man. Motivated, motivated. I am motivated. All right, here we go. Uh, (laughs) We used to chant that in basic training. I don't know why that popped in my head. Anyway, 
Lifelong learning. This this almost goes without saying, Brian. Lifelong learning requires self motivation. Yes, you need to have a positive feeling about learning and about your ability to learn. Um, if you don't understand why you need to learn anything, you're unlikely. You're not going to do well. That's just that's just a fact. So I think it goes without saying because if you're a lifelong learner, you you are doing it for a reason. You have a motivation to do it. You know, and, and that's what's required. And it's self motivation. And, and we've done episodes where we talk about self awareness and stuff. And that's all this is. This is going back to some kind of self awareness that I need to learn some additional skills. What can I learn? Bam, here it is. And and going after it, not being like, well, I really should learn to do that, but I'm yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Like the, the yeah. motivation is what helps. And hopefully our audience, our audience listens to this podcast. And they're doing some lifelong learning. Hopefully we're getting something out of them or giving them something. And that is their motivation to keep coming back and checking us out and, and you know, to continue to learn. So I'm hoping that their motivation plays a key in all of that. There we go, man. So next one I'm hitting upon is acquire. Here it is. Effective learning requires Ooh, okay. that you acquire information through reading, listening, observing, practicing, experimenting, and experience. Information is all about, information is all around you. The trick is to acquire relevant and meaningful information and to develop this into knowledge and skills. Ed, just like on the last episode, I, one of the tools that I brought up, leadership tools, is observation. I think acquire and observation are exactly the same. Reading, we talk about reading all the time, about what we've read and, you know, how much reading we have to do for the show, not alone, not just uh, for the show, but also say for our own personal development, but also for school, for job, all this stuff. So reading is pretty cool uh, to, it's pretty cool to stay in school. Uh, No, but (laughs) listening. So listening, not only like, for instance, we talk about, you and I have talked about listening to audiobooks. Uh, that's one key thing of listening. But also just listening to people around you. Mm-hmm. You know, we've said it before, two ears, one mouth, shut the mouth, listen with the ears, right? Uh, that, to me, that helps. And then- yeah, ob- I know twice ob- as much. Yes, you will. And then observing, right? Just watch, just watch what people do. Look at their actions. Look at their attitudes. Look at their their facial expressions. There's so much to it. If you continue uh, observing what's going on around you, you would be shocked at what you can learn from people. And then practicing. Uh, if 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 you read about it, right, or you listen to something about it, or you observe something, how about you put it in a practice real quick? Uh, allow yourself to kind of use it. And I find myself, I've, Ed, I found myself doing this before where it's like I learned this new trick or trade or something. And then all of a sudden, oh, you know, this is a perfect time to kind of use that that I learned. And I throw it in there. And it, sometimes it works, man. Sometimes it doesn't. But at least you practice it. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Experimenting, that's kind of to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and the experiment kind of falls in the line of practicing to me because sometimes when you're practicing, you're actually experimenting to, you know, to practice. Uh, but experience, we've talked about experience uh, lengthy in the idea of yeah. how we went about learning the, 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 the experiential learning model and how that was able to help us with gaining new knowledge and teaching people teaching our students with that by pulling experiences to associate to other stuff so they can learn from the, the, the stuff we get. So acquire definitely a good one, man. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to search for my experience and search is the next one. No, oh, uh, I see what you did. Learning there. Is, yeah. <laughs> learning is successful is successful when we can search for a personal meaning and the information we're acquiring. Sounds like you're really trying to find your motivation. You ever seen that when people are like, hey, I need you to be this person in this play. Well, what's my motivation? So here we're searching for our motivation to be a lifelong learner. Mm. Um, and then this one here, I definitely I, I can relate to. We find it hard to remember facts without understanding them or being able to put them into context. So let's say Normandy. I understood what Normandy was. I understood what D-Day meant. But when you put your 
feet in the sand and you're looking at these, the length of these beaches and you really have a moment where you're like, Oh, now all of that makes so much more sense because at first you're like, Oh, why did it take them so long to get up the beach? Well, yeah, this beach is huge. You don't realize it till you see it. So it's kind of the same idea with facts. You don't really understand them completely until you get them into some kind of context. Right. Um, and then learning is about applying what you acquire and asking yourself questions such as how does this idea help in my life or what has this experience taught me about myself? And you were just speaking on experience back in the choir and, and you know, everything you do again, this to me, you know, what this really sounds like to me, Brian sounds like we're doing an AR a little bit. It sounds like a little <laughs> bit of, if you think yeah. about how does this idea help me in my help in my life? Or what has this experience taught me? I'm looking for some kind of after action reflection or review to pull back on. So those are the things that I'm searching for as a, as a person who's trying to be a lifelong learner and use uh, per, per personal and professional development to enhance who I am uh, as an influencer, as a leader, as a parent, whatever, a husband. Those are the things I'm looking for, Brian. So search is search is good. Uh, again, I really, I'm telling you, once you get something and you put it in context, everything comes together and you have aha moments. That is true, my friend. Uh, and the next one I'm hitting upon trigger. So human beings are notoriously bad at retaining information. I say yes to that. Um, yes. <laughs> if it's not interesting, I completely will say yes to that. Uh, but also you cannot and will not remember all that you read, hear, and experience, right? Uh, you can help trigger recollection in a variety of ways, though. For example, you can take notes, you can practice, you can discuss, and experiment with new ideas and skills to help you learn and develop. A lot of times, Ed, when I learn something new, um, I try to associate that with something. Because if I can associate it, then that'll in turn enable... It enables me to be able to actually go upon that and to to uh, basically use that because I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this and that and this. Oh, got it. And that's what helps me be able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, triggers. So, again, these triggers, they kind of work. And I think I'm kind of going to be stealing your thunder a little bit. But on the last episode, we talked about. Uh, three by five cards and um, how we use them and also green notebooks. Well, sometimes we'll put those little, you know, words or phrases on our three by five card that will trigger mm -hmm. something that we, we learned or we read or heard in a meeting or something to help us to pull back that information. Because, you know, you, you do have so much that you, especially as you get older, like you've had so many experiences, so many different things in your head at once, you need those triggers and they, they're like a, a, a quick way to retrieve that, that data. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely. And that's, and that's why I like to use certain things to help me trigger, you know, the learning to be able to engage that. Um, and, and it could be, and it could be a situation um, where it's like, Oh yeah, you know what? I remember this and we talked about this during this class, or I remember reading about this, this completely relates to this. Boom. Let me use it. So yeah, definitely, man. So what's next? All right. So we've talked about trigger. We're at examine. Uh, you should regularly examine your knowledge to help reinforce in your mind what you have learned. You should always try to keep an open mind, question your understanding and be open to new information. Uh, so when I, when I was reading the examine one, this is where I think discussion comes in. So let's you and I, all right, we get this article and we say, Hey, we're going to read it. Then we come together. And then before we podcast, we kind of discuss the article and I say, well, this is what I got. And this is what and you say. Well, this is what I got. That discussion is exactly what examining is because if you come to me with something and I'm like, well, I didn't see that in the article. I'm not going to just shut it down there. I'm going to be like, well, you know what? Now I see how I see how Brian saw that. And that discussion is learn. We're learning from that discussion. And that's where what examine really basically examine is to its right to its core. Uh, talking to others, seeing a point of view that can be powerful way of examining your own perception, and understanding of a subject. So I think that's when we have our uh, staff working groups prior to episodes. That's one of the things that we instinctively <laughs> instinctively do 
uh, before we record, Brian. Yeah, I like that, man. That's a, that's a really good example of of examining. <laughs> it really, it really kind of that kind of hits it home, and it allows me to reflect. <laughs> oh, okay. You see what I did there? I like it. I see yeah. what you did. Yeah. So our next little area is reflect. So finally, you should reflect on your learning. Think about how and why you learned, including how you felt about a particular topic or situation before and after you developed your knowledge. Learning from your mistakes as well as from your successes and always trying to remain positive. Now, that's the key part there, I think, is once you do the reflection, try to remain positive on the situation and don't dwell upon that negative, which could turn into, you know, a uh, festering sort of thing. Uh, but reflecting upon what you learned. And I think I think this happens sometimes immediately. And then other times, I think it just takes a little time to reflect upon it, right? Because maybe we didn't soak everything in, like, but you have to keep, you have to kind of re- uh, look at things and then you're like, Oh yeah, you know what? I really understood this and I know what that means. So, but yeah, definitely. Um, but those, those areas, man, I, I, I thought that was great how the, uh, the author was able to offer <laughs> up that stuff for us. Uh, but le- basically learning gives us options, you know, um, the bottom line is whatever life path you're on, uh, there's a number of, of, unanticipated benefits uh, to continue personal and professional development. That's, I mean, to me, that's the whole point behind it. Uh, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter when you start because once again, it's lifelong learning. It, you know, it's, it's continuous no matter what. Uh, I, I think I mentioned it some time back. I used to have a friend that I served with a long time ago. Don't know where he's at now. Um, but <laughs> I remember him telling me about his, 60 year old dad going back to school just because he wanted to go to school again. You know, he had the money to, he was able to afford it. So he went to get like a third master's degree or something like that. Like, and he's only doing it because he just wanted to learn more, which to me was pretty amazing. No, that is awesome too. It is. It is. So definitely when we look at lifelong learning, if people could learn to master their lifelong learning by using this this particular acronym of motivation, acquire, search, trigger, and examine, and then reflect. I think it'll help them do better uh, and to become more knowledgeable and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I definitely say I would have to say that understanding the whole aspect of lifelong learning, it's not just to me, Ed. It's not just like a I do every once in a while. It's always continuously evolving and and going. Yeah, no, it's right, right in the term, right? Like lifelong learning. It, and it's amazing when you start thinking about, because you could be learning any little, little thing. Like, honestly, um, you know, you move into a new house and you've got stone steps and the first time it's really cold, you slip. Oh, you just learned that, hey, that step is a little bit extra slippery in the winter time. And then you can go get some salt or whatever you're going to do for it. But you learn something. It doesn't have to be this profound moment of learning, but you learn something at that set, at that moment, you know? Oh, yeah. So I think it's, and that's what's important to understand. And then everything goes back to checking your ego and be willing to learn. Um, yes. For me, I, I will learn from the lowest private and I will learn from the most senior SAR major. I am not ashamed to say I learned something from a private, you know? Oh yeah. If, if, if that's the case, that's okay. What I just did, we just did this exercise and we had to like, do a little gate guard uh, duty and I'd never done it before. And I got out there and two of the specialists, right. Had done it. And I was like, Oh, so how do y'all normally, you know, kind of set things up because I was reading the SOP and it wasn't the most clear thing. Right. Uh, you know, clear and concise. So I asked them and they told me how, Hey, this, you know, I've actually done it at this gate and this is how we set it up. Oh man. I just learned from, how dare I learn from specialists? Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a senior, like, you know, yeah. um, but when you check your ego, you'll find you learn so much more. And when you close your mouth and just listen, uh, you know, like we said earlier, you'll know twice as much. That, Hey, I think that's great advice, Ed. And that's kind of what's going to lead me into this week's task or yeah, th- for this particular episode. And really this week's task, they've heard it multiple times. I think it's really just a push for people to better understand lifelong learning. And this is to share any episode up to now 
with this is this is number 65 so there's 65 other ones that can help somebody else in their pursuit of lifelong learning so if somebody says man you know i was reading about this topic on uh toxic leaders well offer them up the toxic influencer one or you know what uh I really wish I knew more about, you know, the the suicide epidemic that's across the, the U.S. And, and service members, stuff like that. We'll offer them up episode four where we actually get into that. Um, or I want to learn more about behavioral health in the Army. Well, that the interview with Captain Holtz, that's a great one oh, to yeah. offer up, you know. So there's there's multiple episodes that you can offer up somebody to help them in their pursuit of lifelong learning. And at the same time, they may have something to offer you too. So, but that's it. So share uh, one of these episodes with somebody else uh, so that they can also learn. Uh, with that though, Ed, if anybody was interested in any possible way to learn more about us, to engage with us, to even just to reach out to us for anything, Ed, is there something or some place that they can go to do this? Well, thanks for asking, Brian. They can go to the Instinctive Influencers website. They can check us out, meet the voices, see pictures, all kinds of crazy stuff on there going on. They can see episodes, maybe even see some upcoming episode ideas. They can check us out on all platforms of social media. Well, not all, because I, I really feel like social media platforms multiply daily. So they can check <laughs> us out on Instagram or the Gram. They can check us out on the book or Facebook at 101 Influence. We also have Twitter. If you uh, want to get on there and then you follow one of us, I will follow you back. And uh, hopefully we can share some great ideas. You can share your stories of your experience with lifelong learning. And maybe we'll even, uh, you know, we get enough feedback. Maybe we'll start a little segment on the show where we say, hey, let's read something from the mailbag. I don't know. Who knows, Brian? Who knows? We'll talk about the next Instinctive Influencers podcast working group. Do we have a mailbag? Uh, I mean, we can pull from social media and make one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea, man. Uh, yeah, I uh, I have to agree. Uh, you can find us anywhere. Uh, it's 101 Influence in the search bar or whatever platform you decide. Uh, we do not have TikTok. Uh, I'm not really sure I understand that one yet, but it is funny. Because I do watch some of those videos. Um, my <laughs> wife, she's the one who kind of got me into watching some of them. Some of them are real funny. Uh, but I don't really have much more to say, Ed. So I definitely think it's time we uh, we let this audience go and they can go reflect upon, which was the last one, reflect upon this lifelong learning. All right? Yeah. Hey, that sounds like a great idea, Brian. Hey, once again, buddy, it has been a great podcast. I do want to tell the audience that although when they hear this, you will be safely back with your family, but this is your official last recording in the Republic of Korea. So for I now. thought that the audience should know that for now, we're going <laughs> to hold forever, yeah. but uh, for now, this is your last recording in Republic of Korea. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to get a little, I did get an opportunity to see the photographs from the, uh, from your changeover, your change of responsibility. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get to serve with you, buddy, but I want to tell you, hey, uh, great job in the Instinctive Influencer family, and I are very proud of what you've done, and we look forward to seeing what you do at Fort Carson. Yeah, man, I'm pretty excited about it. I appreciate the comments. Uh, but with that, I am Brian. And I am Ed. And this has been the Instinctive Influences Podcast. Remember, lifelong learning is an entire lifetime of learning. Never stop learning. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Woo!